Yes. So, while I'm going to be doing this thing, um, I want you to tell me if there's anything you feel like I can I can improve on because it's my first you know tutorial and things like that. And if you have any question, type it down below. And we have a wait list for a for our paid class. Because a lot of people have been asking for us to create a class, a paid class where they can one on one sessions and everything. And if you really want that, we are going to we have a wait list. You can click below. You see a WhatsApp link, and you can to take you to our wait list. Now let's go to the class. <laughs> now this is an example page I just created, right? And majorly, like I said, I want to really teach you about how to store data. Let me explain. Now, in a, in any app, let's say for example Instagram. Now, in, when I go to then when every, every time I log in into Instagram, I use my email and my password. Now that email and password tells Instagram their their data, their their server, or you know their back end, right? I'm, <laughs> that this particular user, user A, is logging in. Now, every single thing about me. Things like my name, my description, my bio, you know, my pictures, my friends, everything is stored, you know, on my own file, you know, my own document, right? On Instagram or on any app that you can think of. They have your information. That's why anytime you log in, you see your information. Sometimes you say, welcome, this name. And my name is Benjamin. Welcome, Benjamin. So they have all that information stored. And those kind of information are stored in certain fields, right? So, for example, my name is stored in a text field. Or like in a string field, how they call it. You know, my my picture, my picture will be stored in an image field. All these things are stored like that. And then anytime I log in, I can act, have access to my account. So I want to just teach you the basics of storing data. So we're going to be creating a simple sign up form, which is what we have here. Now, when you go to Bobo for the first time, I'm going to start this from scratch. When you go to Bobo, there are different things that you can work out, right? Uh, now, make sure that once you sign in and you do the entire processes and you come to this particular page one thing they're going to notice is that um your page is going to be on a fixed screen so let me show you how do you how do you get that to pop up you left click twice and this will show so this this particular um control it helps me control everything that is here this particular page so for example i can change the color a bit i can change the color anyhow i want it right but let me go back so wait, or I can press Ctrl Z to go back, or I can just do this. I can go here and go back to the original color. If, I, if you make a mistake, you can do that on Bubble. Now, after doing all of that, um, I want to just tell you to keep it on a fixed screen. Don't play around with it. So I go to layout, keep it on a fixed screen because if it's there, are, there are other kind of um, functions here, and I can teach about that later. But if I put column, for example, see everything changes, right? And I'll explain why that why that happens. And um, when you want to build an app that is functional, that is that fits for different screens, maybe the app fits for a laptop, it fits for phone and things like that without coding. You know, you need to know about column, you need to know about rows and, and stuff like that. But when you're just starting out, it's not necessary to know about all of that yet. You just want to know how to the basics of building an app and things like that. So let me go back. Now, most times when you when you have a new page, let me just name it new. Right? When you have a new page, this is how it looks like. It looks like a white piece of screen and sometimes you don't know what to do with it. So there's a first thing I will do with it is that I will go to mobile, mobile view because I personally I build for mobile. I most of my businesses I always make sure I build for mobile first because 90 plus percent of my users are always accessing my site from mobile. But there's some of my websites that um, I will boldly say you cannot access this thing. You you have to access it with a with a with a mobile, you know, for a better experience, right? That's what I normally say. And whenever I tell a developer that they're like, ah oh, no, but it's just how it is. Most people use their phones these days. Now once I go here, you know, I can change the color of it like I told you before and things like that. But let's try and create a sign up form. So I am not a UI expert. So most time before I want to create an app, I always try to get inspiration. So I got inspiration from this here, but I'm not trying to make it exactly how this is. I'm just trying to um you know you know just show you give you guys an example. So when I look at something like this, I look at this Google, I look at this Apple, I look at this Facebook, you know, things and I'm asking myself, can 
Bobo, can all these new code platforms, can you allow me to log in through Google, Facebook, and Apple and things like that? And the answer is yes, you can log in with all of them. And it's basically an API lesson because you have to connect with all with it. You can if you can do you can do this. So anytime I'm looking at a design, I'm asking, can I do this with it? And the answer is yes, I can do this. But I'm not going to do that, do this for the lesson. I'm just going to use a simple email and password field for the login section because we are going to be creating a field for our own users for our platform. Now I've seen the design. I also came here to look at the colors, right? The colors that she used and that's how i got inspiration for what you saw in the first screen right sign up page now let's go to the new section um so what i'll do is that you can drag a text now so this fixed element this is why i say you should keep it as fixed this fixed element it allows you to drag text wherever you want you can control the, the view but it's not it's not perfect it's just for startup point because if you notice if you try and if you try and now view this particular page or on a laptop you see that it's not able to let's go it's not it's not able to, it's not full size for the laptop it's just like a phone size because that's the size i determined so i'll teach you how you can you can fix all of that later in another class like i said so let's go here um new so in this new i'm going to write hello um create account Now I'm going to remove style. Now um, let me just teach you what this style is all about quickly because this is very very important. Now this style it helps you create um, all your elements. Let me let me show you this. Now this, these are all your elements. There are different elements you can drag on the page. You can drag a button. You can drag. You can drag an icon. For example, now an icon it can be anything you want. You can see all the icons that you have here. For example, now most one of the most popular icons I always like using on my page or my apps is close. You know this close icon that when you click it, it will to close the page, all right? And remember, you're doing all of this without coding, so you can just drag and drop it. But anyways, let's go here. So there's the alert. You know the alert helps. It's 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 a function that helps to alert the user when a particular action has been taken. There are so many elements now. All these elements can can be customized. So, for example, this button, I can customize it, you know, in a certain way that whenever I click, I click on this particular style, it comes to that element that way in which I set. So, so let me ex ex explain. So, for example, now if I create a button and this button has a particular look, the way it looks, I, I create a particular color for it. It will not make sense that every single time I want to create a button like this. I have to now go back there and start editing the colors and things like that. So I can instead just create a style. And anytime I want to make that button the way I want it to be or reference it to the, the way it, I created it on the other page, I can just click the style here. And it helps your design um, be more uh, easy, uniform, you know. And then it also helps your page you know, load faster. It helps with the um, all those things with your page. I don't want to really go to technical. Now... That's just what the style is, but I'm not going to be using this style for this so I can be fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove style. Remember, I can talk about that later or you can ask questions about it, right? Um, now I'm going to go to 40. So this is how I can make my, my text uh, however big I want it to be. So I'm going to make it 40 and I'm going to make it bold, right? So now one thing about this is that I can also change the font to so any font I want. And these are Google fonts and I can also add um custom fonts anytime i want to right so i can teach you about that later also so create account i can just do this right and then you can see create account then i can drag another um text field to this one here and i can say that this text field is going to be you know sign up today i can type type anything i want to type sign up today now remember your app has to be beautiful this is app. I won't say this app is really beautiful. It's just a test project. So take your time when you're building your app to look at designs and things like that. This is your blank canvas. You can do anything. So let me just see what I'm going to do. Let me remove style. And let me just let me make this one 20. Sorry, made a mistake. 20. Now I can drag it out so it can show. Uh, okay. 
Now what I'm going to do is here is I'm going to bring it down here and everything. And now it's looking better. Now another thing I can do is that I like black a lot. I don't know, I really like black in most of my designs. I did, I did not use the last time video that one. Uh, I'm going to make this white. I'm going to make this white. Now, can you do black, light and dark mode with this kind of no-code apps? Yes, you can. You can. So, I can teach about that later. I don't know why it just came to my head. Because the question I had when I first started. Now, sign up today. This is looking cool now. And now, I can now um, use an input form. An input form is what it means, an input. So, it's anytime you're going to be adding information to the, the back end, to the database. Right to like for, for example now a user is trying to type out his email. It's an input form you're going to use. Right, I want to type out my password. I want to type out any kind of information on the platform on Bubble. You use an input form. So I can determine the type of input form. Is it a text? Is it an email? Is it a password? Is it an integer? That's numbers. Is it a decimal? Is it an address? I can determine a lot of things. Yeah. Is it currency? That is it. Is it money? So <laughs> there are so many use cases here. Depending on your use case. Like, like I said, you can ask questions. So let's go to email because it's a sign up form, or let's say text because this first one is going to be I'm going to say um, name, full name, full name. So, what I want to really like to get from your users when you're creating an app, for example, the social media app, there's certain things I would like to get maybe the person's picture, the person's name, things like that, right? Um, let's see. So let's let's create this. Let's try and so background style. Every single time you see background style in bubble, it means the background of the elements that you are. I told you what elements are. So let's say if I say so anytime it says none, that means it's no color at all, right? Or it will revert to white most times. But if you now say flat color, flat color means that okay, the color you are, you are now going to determine the color for it, right? If you say gradient, gradient means two colors mixed together. To mix to form a kind of design and it's beauty it makes, it's very beautiful you can do many things with it so let's just go for a flat color and flat color we want it to be white right we want it to be white so um yeah this is cool so i can say control d control d helps me bring out um like copy the the, the text field or the input field so i can now say this is going to be email so now because i just mentioned that we can also sign up with a picture. Let's do that too. So, so then we have password here. It's going to be password. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm trying to align it. So this is going to be password. 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 Now, I, what else can we sign up with? We can sign up with an address. Anything you can think of, you can do. So just depending on it depends on what you think about, you have to you know put a particular field. For example, now there's also what we call so in the input section, let's just go down. You can see input section, you have multi-line input. That is when you want to write, you want the person to put a lot of information, a big like big text box with plenty of information. We have checkbox, yes or no kind of um, um, fields. You have drop down where you can have like different are you a male or female? So let's try that out here. Let's try that. Let's test that out. Sorry, my stuff is getting cut up. Let me do this. So let's test that out. Drop down. So what we're going to do is now one thing is that you can still customize all of these elements the way you want it to be. So you can look however you want it to look like. So I can say male or female, male or female. Right, and I can say static choice, I can say dynamic choices, I, I can explain that later. But for now, I'm just going to say male, I'm just going to say female, female. Then I can remove style and say that okay, um, you know, this is going to be the background color is going to be white too, right? Then you know, all these text fields, all these texts you are seeing there, you can also change the colors of the text too. I can make it full on black, right? I can make it full on black. And then the placeholder, placeholder, this is the placeholder. This writer that is here, what you're seeing, all this password and things like that. So I can also make it black, full on black also, you know. So, so that it can be more legible 
So I can do anything. I just don't want to take too much time. So male or female. Then I can add a picture if I want to. Right? Uh, let's say I want to add a picture. I don't want to. Okay. So I don't think I have so much space right now. So I might add extra height to my page. Let's say 800. Remember, it's a fixed out. So let's bring it down a bit. Let's bring this down a bit. One other thing I can do is just group all of them. So what I'll do is I'm pressing shift. So I clicked on one. I'm clicking on that one. I'm just holding shift, the shift key. So I can now press the left, um, sorry, the right click. I can right click and then I can, um, I can write group elements in a fixed container. So that means all of them will just be in the same container. Let me just bring this down a bit. So instead of dragging each of them one by one, it helps me drag all of them at the same time. Right? This is good. So let's bring this down. I think I might want them to be closer. You know, uh, okay. Um, sorry. Okay. I can use this, I can use, I can measure it by I'm brushing, so I don't really want to take too much time. Okay, so yeah, we're done. I hope it looks better. Right, so now if I want to add an image to it, I can just say uh, image, right? Sorry, upload, uh, upload. So picture uploader, I can put picture uploader here. Right, and let me do this. Then, and the user, the user can now upload an image. But I don't really want that for now. So let's just go back to the way it was, right? In fact, yeah, we are, I think it's looking better now. But I don't think they are uniform. So let me just try and make it uniform. Okay. 32 pixel 26 okay I'm using that to measure the distance 22 30 so I'm hovering over the element and I'm just measuring their distance so I think this is okay I think this is better right it looks better so I will drag a button to the page, right? When I drag a button to the page, this is it here, this is it. Okay. Now this button, I can make it however I want to make it, but I already created a style before. Okay, I did, I, okay, I did not. What I'll just do is, I think I'll just leave it at blue. Blue is not bad, right? I'll now say, what I'll say here is sign up, right? So that's it. Now, if I want to add extra information, for example, now, um, do you see some checkboxes in different websites where they'll say, you know, for like you have to consent for the terms and conditions, things like that. I can add anything I want to add here. But this is just a basic site. And let's show you how this restore data. So I'm going to be going here. This is the data type. And you can see that anytime you create an app on Bubble, they already create a user field for you because it's very important. There's a lot I can talk about all of this, but it's not every single app that you create that you need a user field. For example, if you are creating a, a notes app, you don't need a user field. So you might need a user field to store the notes on that for that user, but not all notes app, app need that. If you are doing a um, an app for, let's say, a calculator, you do not need a notes, you don't need a user field because most, most calculators don't need a user field unless you want to store information for that particular user. And that's not necessary. But now we need the user field based on this app. This is just a test app. And we, apart, so you can see that Bob already created an email for us. The modified date is that anytime you create, you change information on this for, the, for that particular, um, you know, data, data field, it will, um, it will save the date for you. Created date, the day you created it, slog. I can talk about that, that another time, right? So, but just know that this is, this is powerful. So what, what we normally call this, we can call this like a, a collection or we can call this like a um, data type 
right? Uh, you can call you, you call it a meeting, but basically just to make it uniform, I'm going to talk, I'm going to teaching about frontal flow. You can call it a collection, and then the fields in it are what we call data types. And then anytime somebody creates a new a new document, we're using those. For example, now I, I as a user, anytime I now sign in or I create an account to your platform, that particular user he is a document. So all the user's information is inside that document. Based on what you specify, I don't. Want, I hope I'm not really, you know, um, saying too much, so I don't like make you feel overwhelmed. To those to those that know about Bobo, I'm talking to people that are not that I have not done anything like this before. So forgive me. Anyways, so I talked about other fields like male or female. Just say gender. Gender. So I'll just say a text. Right, because any any field that they that they click on that drop down, the it will start as a text. So I'll show you shortly. Then we should full name, full name. All right, we we'll have a text there. Create. So what else do we have there? Sign in. All right, sign up. Sorry. So that's all. That's all. So now we can go to preview. Right. And now you can see what we created. So I can say full name, Benjamin, right? I can say email, I can say, um, this email is already out there. Timmy, okay, test email at gmail.com, gmail.com. Now one thing about this is that if you if a user creates an account on Bubble, you can send them a confirmation email and things like that. But well, we're not going to go into all of that right now. So this is a password field. I want to make sure. Did I make this a password field? I did not. So it's a password field. This is email. Right. Email. Now. Okay. So one thing I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to go to sign up. So I can. I want to. I want to actually create an action for any time a user signs up. Right. So I'll say sign the user up. So let me show you what I did here. Let me let me slow down. So I went, I click this button, right? And I went to this control room here. Then I click start or edit workflow. Now I'm going to create a workflow. So the workflows basically is it's you're telling the app if this person does this, do this. If that person does this, do this. Like your this is your control station of the entire app, and it's amazing. It helps you as a no code developer to do a lot. So let's say sign the user up, sign the user up. I can click here. So I can choose which field is for email. I'll say this field, um, input email, then the value, what, what, the user, what the user that is signing up has typed in. Then the password, input password, what the user that, sorry, what the user has typed in, right? That's the password. Then require a password confirmation, no, because we did not create another password field here. You know to say that okay the person needs a password confirmation right so we will now say remember the email yes this means that anytime the user comes back signs up to their account and comes back their email will still be there to help them you know sign into the account now add another field other fields are like full name you can see it already specifying it for us there because we went to the data this database here to add these things here so they are like these are different fields that we can store data in like i remember i told you about the instagram analogy in the beginning Right, so we go here, we say full name, we say we go here, we say impute full name. Now one thing you need to understand is that each time you are, you are building something on bubble, you need to always name the elements. Not don't only rely on what bubble has given you here. For example, if I say full name XYZ, because if I have a lot of, of fields that have to do with name or something like this, it might be hard controlling it without naming it yourself. So you can name it to identify it. You need to identify all your elements on your page because this is a simple one but i can start building a page where i have so many elements like so many elements and <laughs> let's let's just go here um sign the user up full name you can see it has changed to xyz's value now gender then i'll go to the drop down so drop down male or females value so we are done now let's just do a test run so let's go to full name. What is my name? Now, before I do, before I sign in, let's do this. Let's go to data. 
Now app data here, this page here, this is where you can manage all the data in your app. You can modify anything. It's amazing, guys. This is really amazing. Now for me, I can actually sign users up, but I'll just go here. Then I'll say full name, Ben, Benjamin. I'll say email, you know, test, test user at gmail, at gmail.com. Then I'll say password. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's my password. Then male or female, you can see a drop down will appear, which is really cool. Now you can customize this to look better. But I'll say mail, then I'll press sign up. And then it's signing me up. Now it has signed me up. But the issue here is that I did not create another action on that page that you can go to. You know, it should or you should go to after it signs me up. So if you want to, if you want to fix that, what I'll just do is that I can just create a confirmation page quickly. Confirmation. You know, uh, in another page that can take me to. I just work on this page quickly. Um, remember, mobile. Sorry, mobile. Right. Okay, so let's see. Yay! We move down up front forty, right? So I said, welcome to my no code app, and I'm congratulating the person. Now, traditionally, this will be your home page, right? This will be your home page. <laughs> so I'm just writing anything here. I am playing around because I don't have much time, right? I can even add images here and do anything I want, whatever I want. You know, I can even maybe add like an icon that is spinning. I can do anything I want to do here on this page. Should I just... Um, let me just do this. I choose this icon, play around with it, you know. Then let's make it spin. Let's make the icon rotate a bit. All right. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go back to that sign up page, right? Not this one. The other one. Um, new. Then I'm going to create go to workflow, and I'm going to say that once the user is signed up. He should he should then um, navigate right or go to page right go to this page here i'll now say um confirmation right there's no i don't have any data to send i can talk about that later and yeah so if we go back here and we create a test account again no no close then we say ben and we say email you know ben at email.com and we say password field one two three four five six seven eight then we say male or female we say mail and we go to sign up you see it's going to log me in and it's going to take me to that page right close so this is just a sample app right and this is really really powerful i'm not seeing that yay right now i will check that later but as you can see there's a lot that you can do with Bubble, a lot. So this is just like an a sample um, or a test app that I'm just creating here. And if I go to the app data here, you can see that the two users I created are here now. And it's beautiful. I can click here and I can see all their information. And I can add more information that I need from them. There are many successful apps that have been created with, with, look, with Bubble. And it's amazing. So guys, check them out and do exactly what I did here. Ask the right questions and I'll make videos to answer your questions. I love you guys.